Good morning. I pray it is well with your soul this morning. Grace to you and peace from God, our creator, from Jesus, our Savior, and from the Holy Spirit who breathes life in and among us on this beautiful Thursday morning. Our scripture reading for this Thursday, the 25th day in February, comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark in the first chapter. If you happen to worship with a congregation that follows the Revised Common Lectionary, this may sound familiar. It was the reading from this past Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent. To give just a bit of context, so we're right away in the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, starting in the ninth verse. And as you may or may not know, if you don't, here's some trivia for your Thursday morning. But Mark's Gospel does not start with a Christmas story like Luke's does. We get the shepherds and the angels. We get the nativity scene from Luke's Gospel. We get the Magi story from Matthew. But in Mark's Gospel, we, see, we meet Jesus for the first time as an adult at the moment of his baptism. The eight, uh, the eight verses that precede the reading I'm about to share are, uh, include a prophecy from John the Baptist, and then we pick up in the ninth verse. So here we are in Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Here ends the reading. Well, perhaps several or many of you have heard the story of Kirby Feldman. Name ring a bell to anyone? Well, if not, I commend you to the story told, produced, and shared by Matt Holson and Lonnie Nichols, um, some of our own storytellers here at Good Sam Sanford. The story is available on the Sanford News site, and it's been sent through several employee emails. So I commend it to you, but for now, I'll summarize. Kirby is a recent retiree from Racine, Wisconsin. And early on in the pandemic, Kirby somehow learned about the send a note feature on the Good Sam website through which anyone can send a note to an email to our residents in any of our Good Sam facilities. Uh, It's very, I think, important to note that prior to this effort, Kirby had no personal connections to any residents, no family members, no friends. And yet, she has taken it upon herself after learning about the send a note feature. Every single day, she writes one note and she sends it out through this feature on the website to upwards of 80 facilities, 80 Good Sam facilities around the country. One of the recipients of Kirby's notes is a woman by the name of Elizabeth Beck, who's a resident in Davenport, Iowa. And Elizabeth said this about Kirby's letters, which you can see Elizabeth say for herself in Matt's story. Elizabeth said, quote, makes me feel good, like I'm wanted. End quote. In our scripture reading today, it's a voice from heaven who calls out to Jesus after his baptism and says, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Very similar to the word Elizabeth Beck in Davenport is hearing from Kirby Feldman. It's a word that she is beloved. A word that even a year into a traumatizing and isolating pandemic, someone is calling out to her. Maybe it's not a voice breaking through the heavens, but it's a voice writing from a couch. And even so, a powerful word of belovedness. 
Over these Thursdays in the season of Lent, Pastor Bill and I will share a bit from this book uh, called Life of the Beloved by Henry Nouwen. Some of you are spending your Lent with Henry Nouwen through the daily devotional, Steadfast Love, that... um, by the way, if you don't have a copy, we have, thanks to Pastor Bill, we have more copies available here. You're welcome to grab one. If you're watching this later and happen to be at National Campus, you're welcome to come grab them later, or we can mail them out if you're not here. In any case, on Thursdays in Lent, we're going to be looking at this book, wherein Henry Nouwen talks about the foundational importance of living life as one of God's own beloved. Nowen lived his own life by this frame, framework, and he breaks this down into four words, and that's the uh, really the operating um, uh, theme and work of this book. Those four words are taken, blessed, blessed, broken, and given. And we'll look at those four words in the upcoming weeks. It just so happens that in Nouwen's introduction to the book, Life of the Beloved, he references the very passage from the Gospel of Mark that you just heard. And that is when after Jesus' baptism, the Spirit descends on him like a dove and a voice from heaven says, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now one says this promise, that one first spoken to Jesus from the heavens, that this promise of belovedness is the fundamental promise of life, not just for Jesus, but for each of us. Now one writes that in his own research and life and listening and life of spirituality, in which he worked both with people who identify with the faith tradition and those who don't, he writes, quote, You are my beloved reveals the most intimate truth about all human beings, whether they belong to any particular tradition or not. End quote. In this introduction, now and even defines friendship as, the, as giving the gift of our own belovedness. The gift of belovedness is a two-way street. It's giving and receiving. And certainly this is a two-way street we see in the story of Kirby Feldman and Elizabeth Beck. Kirby is recognizing the belovedness of our residents, including Elizabeth. And in return, they are celebrating Kirby's own belovedness and the gift that she shares with them each and every day. I'd further argue that belovedness is embedded in our own Good Sam mission statement, right? In Christ's love, everyone is someone is another way to say everyone is beloved. Each of our residents are beloved, and our mission is to name and share that belovedness through the various roles we have. Elizabeth and Kirby are beloved. Each of our CNAs and our IT folks are beloved. Every one of our operations directors and our HRAs and administrators are each beloved. And so today, my prayer is that each of you gathered here and who may be watching online later, my prayer is that you hear the promise of your own belovedness. You are a child of God in whom God is well pleased. You didn't have to earn this promise, and you will never have to earn that promise. You are a beloved child of God. And my, the second part of my prayer for you is that you would go from this place to recognize the belovedness in those you serve from whatever your vantage point is in your call with good Sam and Sanford. You would name and recognize the belovedness in those you see today, whether it's here in your workplace, wherever you are, and uh, that you would call out to them from your place. And so let us pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks that your voice calls out to Jesus and calls out to each of us. 
you call us beloved, and in us you are well pleased. May this truth be the foundation of our day and in our, all of our days. We give you thanks for the gift of belovedness and the opportunity to share this gift through our callings, whether here with good Sam and Sanford, whether in our families and in our friendships. We give you thanks for Kirby and the inspiration she is to share in this gift of belovedness. We give thanks and also pray for your belovedness among the employees and those we serve in Twin Valley, Minnesota and in Tyndall, South Dakota. For those in the Department of Financial Services and those served by them, we give you thanks and ask for your steadfast love and presence. We pray for all who are facing significant transitions in their family and friends, that they might hear your voice calling out, that no matter what life brings, you say you are my beloved and with whom and in you you are well pleased. In them you are well pleased. We lift up those private concerns of our hearts and those in our prayer baskets and pray that your belovedness might be known in all circumstances, in joy and in sorrow, in celebration and in loss. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May the God who calls you beloved bless you today and in all the days to come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.